I did want to start with that to remind you how powerful you are when it comes to teaching children math. I say teachers who love teaching math make children love math. And even if you don't love math, you have to fake it till you feel it. Here's a now the next tool is a, a math mat. And I wish I had known about this when I taught school because it's perfect um, for addition and subtraction. So it's just a square and you can make it as big as you want. I kind of like to use a file folder because it folds up nicely and it's a good sturdy. Um, you cut it so it's a 12 inch square and you make a line down the middle and then you cut this top section into two. And you explain that this line is like the equal sign in math or the same as what's up here has to be the same as what's down here. And so um, you can do all sorts of number stories. And um, I, I don't know if you've ever used ma um, poker chips for math manipula manipulatives, but I, I just love the way they sound. Um, but let's say, let's put two in this square and let's put one in this square and then bring them down together, how many all together. So very visual hands-on way to do addition or subtraction problems. Older kids have them write out the equation after you do it. Um, this is also really helpful when you do the missing add-in. Like, um, I have, um, I have nine, I have five cookies, I have nine friends, how many more do I need to have enough for all of my friends? So we put nine down here, and we know we have five, how many more do we need? So again, it's a very concrete way to help them figure out that missing number. And I'm sure a lot of you have um, used these little PALS plates and uh, food for addition and subtraction problems similar to the math mat that they put the different amounts and then bring them down together. Um, and then one more little addition tool, the children trace around their hands and cut them out and you glue their hands so you've just got the palm glued and then the fingers can move. And so you can use the little fingers, you can use the little fingers to count. For your younger children, you can use these for your finger plays. In fact, for four-year-olds, I'd probably just use one hand and use it for all my little finger plays with five. Um, but for your kindergarten children, you could use this and um, you could do like um, two plus th three equals how many and they put the fingers down and then uh, a very concrete way to see the amount and again have them write it down. I have a little game that's really fun to play this time of year. It's called Bats in a Cave and I just took a styrofoam bowl and cut, uh, I mean colored a little arch in it so it looks like a cave and then reason I like to do this this time of year. All those little bat rings or spider rings and you lay these out and we've got, let's see, there's five um, bats. Now I want you to hide your eyes, hide your eyes everybody, no peeping. And you take some bats and put them in the cave. And then how many bats are outside? Three. How many bats are in the cave? And they, if they tell you the answer, then you say, how did you know that? I found in math, if one child will say the answer, and then you say, how did you know that? And when you first ask them that, they go, mm, I, don't know, I just knew that. But it's called thinking out loud. If you can get them to think out loud and say something like, well, you have three bats out there, and so there must be two bats inside because... You have five fingers, you know, whatever their answer is, it helps the younger children scaffold to that level. So bats in the cave is such fun to play. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen these little math bags where you take a zip bag, draw a line down the middle, and you put flat objects in the children count, and then they move the objects from one side to the other and show the different combinations like this one. I have eight lima beans, and we can slide them back and forth and say we've got five lima beans and three lima beans. Young children don't have what they call a conservation of quantity. And so these things really help them develop that and see different combinations that make that. Okay, now I've got a little tool for measurement. This is called a bean counter. It's a piece of clear packaging tape with 10 lima beans laid end to end. You fold up the top, you fold up the bottom, seal it a little bit, snip it off, and you've got a bean counter. 
Why do I like the bean counter? Because inches are abstract for young children. An inch doesn't mean anything to them. But a bean is real and it's concrete. And so they lay their bean counter up to different objects and they count how many beans, one, two, three, four, five, six, six beans long. So you can count lots of different objects. If you um, wanna know how long your room is, the reason I use 10 is that you can lay them side by side and you can count by tens, see how many beans long your room is. Now, another measurement idea with this is, you know, take your bean counter, can you find something that is two beans long? And so, not only just to measure, but as, at this point you're estimating, they have to walk, what, is, what would be two beans long? And they walk around until they find something that measures up and is two beans long. Um, you could also say, can you find something longer than your bean counter? Can you find something shorter than your bean counter? So they're actively walking around the room using their own little tools. And they're all busy, and they're all engaged, and they're all doing something. Um, just a few more math tools because I'm not supposed to go over when I do these um, Facebook lives, but I have so much to share with you. A deck of cards. I mean, it's incredible how many math games you can play with a deck of cards. Take out the face cards and then you can use these for sorting and patterning and, and who has more and who has less. And um, another fun thing to do with these cards is to give each child two cards and they have to come up with a number story about their cards. I know a lot of you have seen me talk about the highway letters. Well, you can also do highway numbers, and you can download these at makinglearningfun.com. And by the way, I know somebody's going to send me an email, uh, uh, put a note on Facebook that you're holding things up backwards. Well, when you do Facebook Live, they're backwards, but my webmaster will do a little magic, and so if you come back tomorrow, I'll have um, a revised video that you can watch where they're the right way. So anyway, um, you've got your highway numbers. They can take a car and they can drive around the car. They can take Play-Doh and roll it and put it on here. You can pass these out and um, how can you find somebody that will be a friend of 10? So they have to find somebody that will equal 10. They can get an order. You can use these when you sing your songs, finger plays, different things like that. Um, and all of these ideas will be on my blog, drgeneandfriends.blogspot.com. Over the next week, each day, I will have these math tools, how to make them, and activities to do with them. Don't have time today, but certainly the 10 frame is a wonderful tool. Wreck and Wreck. And you don't have to buy those. You can make those yourself. And I have directions for that. And then dot cards. I mean, what's not to love about dot cards? And you can download these free off the internet as well. Just two more little tools. Um, I was doing a workshop one time, and this teacher told me that all of her children had math boxes. And so um, I, I'm not sure if the parents put in the materials for this, or, you know, as the children made these different things, they had them in there, but every child had a math bo box, and then if they finished math early, they could get their math box and do the different activities. And they're just simple things like dice and, and a, a, a tape measure. Oh my goodness, kids love these. And so just things that you could um, ask parents to get at the dollar store. Um, but they would certainly love their own little math box. And then the last idea is a math office. And um, this might be a good thing to do in January just to perk things up a little bit. It's two file folders taped together. And then you put the different things that you're working on in math, maybe a hundreds chart, or days of the week, or months of the year, or um, I've got a math mat on the back. I've got a clock. Again, adapt these to the skill level of your students and what you're working on. And then um, one teacher even suggested putting your little um, math beads at the top so children could use these. So when they do their math, they get out, get out their math office and they set up their math office and they are mathematicians with their math office. Well, before I go, I have to tell you something exciting. We have... Um, 
a few little guacamole um, October songs coming up. One of them um, is called Autumn Avocado, and that is for you teachers who are not allowed to do Halloween in your school. So I've got raking leaves and um, making pumpkin pies and football and items like that. And then the other one is called um, uh, Halloween Avocado or something like that. And that one has mummies and um, scary things, some silly things that children would like to do. So um, in the next couple days, my webmaster will put magic on those and we will have those posted for you. And then just to close with um, a little advertisement uh, that Carolyn Kislowski and I, if you haven't checked out our um, I'm Only For the Ultimate Center Guide for Pre-K. And then we also have, each month we have a packet with October Happies or November Happies, all sorts of activity songs, things to make school more fun. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope I've made math a little bit more fun for you. And um, I'll close with this. I want you to all feel your forehead. Do you feel it? I think you do. You all have math fever now. Thanks for joining me. Have a good night.